I can't be the only person in the world that finds junk food irresistible, right? Burgers, chips, pizzas, ice cream, chocolate. I mean, you'll say you'll just have a little nibble, but before you know it, you've accidentally eaten your body weight in cheese puffs. We have all done it, don't lie. But why does trash food taste so good, but yet feel so naughty? How can a perfectly innocuous pizza hijack your brain to make you think it's appropriate to eat one and a half thousand calories in one sitting? Well, like so many of our strange behavioral quirks, it all stems from our evolutionary past. Back before the advent of agriculture around 12,000 years ago, ancient humans, like their animal ancestors, relied on hunting and gathering for their food. The basis of their diets were fruit, berries, eggs, seafood, and the odd large mammal. But foraging enough food to sustain yourself and your family was hard, risky work, and it had disappointingly poor returns. All of which meant that it was pretty tough to maintain a healthy diet. So early humans did what all creatures do to survive, they evolved. Specifically, they evolved to be really, really good at figuring out what foodstuffs were worth the effort of tracking down. They developed a taste for rich, nutritious foods that could give them enough energy to go out on tomorrow's hunt. Given their relative scarcity in nature, foods that were rich in sugar, fat and salt were in particularly high demand. Let's go through them. Sugar. Made of glucose and its molecular relatives, it's the basis for energy production in all of our cells. And you don't need me to tell you the energy boost that you get from that mid-afternoon chocolate bar. And we can get sugar from complex carbohydrates like the starch found in grains and potatoes. But they're not the so-called free sugars that are the holy grail of quick, easy energy. Fat can also be used for energy, and it's actually good to have some in store. A little bit of fat is like insurance for the winter. It insulates our organs, keeping them warm and working normally when it's cold outside. And it's an emergency dense energy reserve for when sugars are thin on the ground. Finally, salt. It's not used for energy production, but it is critically important for maintaining the healthy function of the trillions of cells that make up your body. The sodium in salt is like the body's flight controller, keeping the fluid balance just right and orchestrating the movements of muscles and the firing of nerves. So yeah, salt kind of a big deal. Understandably then, since sugar, fat and salt were so critical to our pre-agricultural survival, early humans evolved a bit of a soft spot for them. More than a bit, actually. Studies have shown that when we eat these types of food, the reward centers of our brain light up, giving us feelings of intense pleasure that drive our desire to eat more of them. Interestingly, these are the same neural pathways that are affected by drugs and that lead to addiction. So, by evolving an automatic and autonomic response that makes us feel all warm and gooey inside, our brains have bypassed the boring conscious decisions and sent us straight for the good stuff. Do you ever feel like your brain's got a mind of its own? Well, there you go. Fast forward to today. Nutrient-packed food is available on almost every street corner, and it's a bit easier to pop down to the shops for a pint of ice cream these days than go hunting for it. Modern Western diets are no longer a game of nutritional brinkmanship. You may be tempted to think that because the need for sugar, fat and salt is no longer the be all and end all, we could give up on our desperate desire to consume. Well, sadly, you'd be wrong. In fact, while energy packed, nutritious farmed food has been readily available for the last 12,000 years, that only makes up around 10% of our history. For the remaining 100,000 years or so, humans' cravings for sugary, salty, fatty foods have been crucial for our survival. And that kind of advantageous desire doesn't easily disappear. Junk food is specifically designed to tickle your taste buds. It's crammed full of sugar, fat, and salt to do just that, taking advantage of your mild addiction to the stuff that keeps you alive. And if foods can't use the real stuff, manufacturers add chemicals like MSG to help simulate the taste of meat, which we associate with the delicious fat and salt that it can contain. To find out how MSG works, check out my previous Earth Lab video. I will leave a link to that in the description and at the end. So combine the ease of getting your hands on a burger with the ancestral neural pathways that mean we just can't say no, and you got yourself a problem. Some of us are more prone to this gastronomic hedonism than others, and without enough willpower, our brains and junk food can lead us down the path of obesity, heart disease, and many other health problems. Not so pleasurable now, eh? And it gets worse. 
because the more fat, sugar and salt we eat, the less excited our brains get. So because we still have a craving for the pleasure we know these substances can bring, we need to eat more to get that fix. It's called habituation. And guess what? It's also a characteristic of drug addiction as well. Sadly, there's no subconscious reward for healthy foods like leafy veg. These have been just too plentiful in our evolutionary past for us to develop a specific liking for them. And in fact, their bitter taste can often uh, set off alarm signals in your head screaming, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. With healthy food leaving a nasty taste in our mouths while sugary treats are just oh so, so good, what hope do we have? Sadly, there's not really a quick fix. Scientists have managed to do something clever. By increasing people's ability to taste fat, you can then decrease the amount of fat in our diets. And they've even boosted how full fatty foods make you feel. But the one thing they've not been able to change is the pleasure we experience when we eat them. So hardwired is the evolutionary instinct to save for the winter that our brains can conveniently disconnect the long-term reality from the short-term sensation. One surefire way of avoiding hedonistic overeating is to design your meals to satisfy your cravings, but not overindulge on your nutrients. Junk food might be all very well and good for a quick snack, but for a healthy life, you need to put your apron on. So, now you know what your junk food is doing to your brain. Will you be picking up the carrot sticks instead of the fries? What is your weakness? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get your regular fix of Earth Lab videos. No nasty consequences, I promise. See you soon.